Namaste. Well, here I am in Jagannath Puri in Odisha, India. And I just had a long trip. <laughs> oh boy, that was a doozy because I took the night flight from Chennai and got in at five in the morning and then had to rush to take a train at eight o'clock. And that was an 18 hour journey that, of course, the train was late. So it turned into a 20 hour journey. <laughs> and I got here, you know, in one piece, but kind of roughed up around the edges. Anyway, so I went to see the Shankaracharya of Puri. And when I got there, they told me, oh, well, we thought from what you said in your email that you're an Indian, but you're a foreigner, so he doesn't want to talk with you. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Here is supposedly the contemporary representative of the greatest authority on non-duality And he's making distinction between an Indian and a foreigner. But, you know, that's the mood here. Like, if I try to go to the Jagannath temple, the main temple here in town, they won't let me in. And if I try to sneak in or something, if they catch me, they'll beat me up and throw me out. So, <laughs> Jagannath is supposed to be the Lord of the universe. But if you come from some other place than this little tiny country of India, you can't go in and see him. Come on, people. There's a really nice story about Adi Shankaracharya. He was in Varanasi, Benares. Just had taken bath in the Ganga. And he's coming out, and there's a shudra with five dogs blocking his path. And so Shankara says, uh, uh, I'm a brahmana, please move aside. And the shudra says, well, wait a minute. You're supposed to be teaching Advaita, that everything is one, and that there are no qualities in Brahman, and so on and so forth and that we're all Brahman and everything is Brahman. So why are you discriminating between a Brahmana and a Kshudra? Why are you seeing two different qualities where actually there's only one Brahman everywhere? Shankaracharya was shocked. <laughs> and he realized this is, this is right. This is true. So he actually he bowed down to the Sudra and his dogs. <laughs> and he realized in that moment that this was actually Vishnu. And the dogs represent the five senses. And that actually there is nothing but Brahman everywhere, in everything. And everybody, <laughs> every living creature is actually Brahman. <laughs> So why are you discriminating? Why are you seeing a difference and saying that, oh, this type of person can't become a sannyasi or a brahmana or can't go in such and such a temple uh, or can't know brahman, he can't become self-realized? Uh, why do you say like that? Well, Statistically speaking, if you take the large view, you know, the sample of the whole of humanity, statistically, it's more likely if a person is outside from, from outside of India that they won't understand these things because of differences in culture and education and so on heredity, environment. But 
For every generalization you can make, there's always an exception. The individual is the exception. The individual can attain states that are not part of his cultural and environmental and hereditary programming. The individual is the one who bears the karma. And if he created causes in previous lives that lead him to enlightenment in this life, it doesn't matter where he's born. It shouldn't matter anyway. But it does matter to people who are trying to prop up failing organizations and chauvinistic, racist religions and stuff like that. So, they missed. I mean, they weren't rude. At least they were polite, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry, but, you know, like that. But still, it sucks, doesn't it? So far from getting any approval or guidance or even encouragement from the, the Shankaracharya huh, of Puri, I'm like chased away like a stray dog from the temple. <laughs> I suppose I could just go down the road to the Iskon temple. They take everybody. <laughs> But to see, that's the thing. Once you have an organization, once you have some kind of standard and some kind of rules and some kind of a hierarchy and a pecking order and all that, you have to discriminate. You have to say, this person is higher, this person is lower. Uh -huh. This person is better, this other person is worse. This one is qualified, this one is not qualified. See, this is why I don't want to get into being a guru. And so after consulting the astrology and the I Ching and whatnot, I, I think I'm going to give up my idea of establishing some kind of center. I mean, anybody can come wherever I am and visit me you know, and just provide their own accommodations and like that. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into the idea of the, this person is qualified and this person is not qualified. Although, you know, if somebody wants to see me, wants to visit with me, wants me to coach them or whatever, I would definitely look at their chart and I would want to talk with them probably quite a bit about what are their intentions and so on. But still, that's to protect them from making offenses due to misunderstanding, lack of preparation, and so on. Because I've seen it happen before. When I had a, a, an ashram before, I accepted everybody. And it led to a situation where basically uh, people with no qualifications got too much power. And they started to rebel against me, <laughs> the guru, right? You know, well, it's the old five against one thing. You know, there's more of us than there are of you. So our opinion matters more. It doesn't matter how qualified we are or, or are not doesn't matter that you're self-realized and we're not, or at least we don't think we are. <laughs> I mean, look, if you're going to say this non-duality is the truth, you know, you can talk the talk, but then you got to walk the walk. And if somebody approaches who wants to realize this, or wants to help spread it because people will benefit from understanding this philosophy, then you have to view them on their merits, not on some cut and dried material policy 
basically. Oh, if somebody's from outside India, then that's no good. We don't want to see them. See, they, they didn't even bother to really talk with me. They didn't probe and, and see what is my understanding, what is my realization. They probably didn't even look at my videos. Well, of course they didn't look because they didn't, they didn't understand beforehand that I'm not Indian. But see, that's a material designation. Indian, not Indian, foreigner, this, that. These are all material designations. What does that have to do with the Dvaita? Nothing. Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya, realized that. And he was able to correct his mistake. But these guys are too proud. They're too arrogant. They have some position, so they have to defend it. And let me tell you, this is most Indian spiritual types are afraid of Westerners because Westerners have generally better education, better nutrition, better intelligence, you know, uh, more energy and, and so on than most Indians. That's just the way it is. So they're afraid Westerners are going to come in and basically take over. But of course, in my case, I have absolutely no desire <laughs> to take over anything or, you know, usurp anybody's position or what to speak of, you know, invalidate their designations, their labels, uh, who they think they are or who other people think they are. That's none of my business. I just see that everything is Brahman. <laughs> That's my business. And uh, what do I do most of the time during the day? I just be. I just enjoy existing, being, being conscious. It's beautiful. It's a miracle. Every moment. Who would want to miss even a second of this amazing, glorious, fantastic existence? So anyway, now what am I going to do? <laughs> well, I've got a month in Puri. I was going to stay until August, but actually I can go back anytime to Sri Lanka. Maybe I'll just lay low here in Puri and, um, I don't know, continue our series on Upanishads and, um, and go back at, at the end of the month or so. I'll see. Uh, I haven't made up my mind. It's too early. So uh, really, the, the next order of business is to find a good restaurant for lunch. <laughs> You know, life is simple when you are. Life is beautiful. There's no need to be in denial about any of it. There's no need to be angry. There's no need to be uh, proud and arrogant and dismiss others without even getting to know them. There's no point in it. So th this is why, you see, I steer people away from spiritual organizations and professional teachers and like that. And I say, you know, you have all facility at home. Download the books. Study them. Do the practices. And you'll get far better results because there isn't somebody always criticizing you, always playing political games, trying to manipulate you or exploit you in any way. So just stay within your comfort zone and become self-realized at home. Really, there's no obstacles, not these days with internet and everything. And you can always get in touch with me 
write me an email, we'll discuss a little bit, open up a signal channel, and we can confer. I can advise you. You can ask me questions, whatever you want to do. I'm glad to help. And that's really <laughs> my only uh, intention because I have no intention to get involved in a lot of complicated relationships and have to pay a lot of attention to the outside world when I'm perfectly happy within. So, Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.